In this video, we will be deploying a sample application Nginx on EKS cluster following this documentation. So in my previous video, we already have the Kubernetes cluster with at least one node. We installed the kubectl on our machine and then we are ready to deploy the Nginx application on this Kubernetes cluster. So for that, I have this repo also created that you can refer but uh, this is the kubernetes code and nginx and this is the deploy.yaml file so it is going to create the namespace with this name and then it is going to create a deployment which is the kubernetes resource it will create the deployments and it is using the image from the docker it is using the image from the ecr the nginx and it will deploy it so this is the Kubernetes resource YAML configuration. I have some videos where I'm going through what is Kubernetes namespace, what is Kubernetes deployment. You can refer those to get more understanding about all those resources. But for now, I will be using this deploy.yaml file and deploying it on the EKS cluster. So, so I am on this, I am on my terminal and if I go there, so to run your command, to run your deployment YAML file, the command is kubectl apply hyphen f deploy dot YAML. And now you can see that it has created the namespace also and it has created the deployment also. And if I do this kubectl get pods hyphen a, so now you will see that it has created these three pods also. And the same thing you can actually check it on your EKS cluster as well. So if I go there in Elastic Kubernetes service. And go to resources, you will see that it has created all these pods here as well. And if you go there, all the event details you will be you, you should be able to see here as well. People generally uh, follow the CLI to check the events and all. But yes, there is an option if you want to use the console to check the events what happened. And in case if it it failed, you you can see it here as well. So now those are deployed. Now how we will access it? We have just created the deployment object and now if I want to just check if it has worked successfully, for that you can actually just go, because there is no load balancer, nothing is on public, how you will access it? So for now, just to test if everything is successfully deployed, you can actually go inside the pod and see if you can do the curl http localhost so now to access or to go inside the pod you can actually use this command kubectl exes hyphen it hyphen n your namespace and your pod name so that we can check if the nginx application is working fine or not so let me just go there So we are connected there and if I do curl http localhost you are getting welcome to nginx page. So this is how you can just validate if your application actually working fine or not. There is, another, there is one more option so today we ran the curl http localhost so all these pods get the ip address also. So if I do this hyphen o wide you will see I have to just do this yeah so here you will see all of the pods got the IP address also so instead of the local host you can use these IPs also so this is very basic to just validate whether you can actually see if your application is working fine or not the next step is you generally create a kubernetes service which is like you create the cluster IP so that you can so that is used to 
communicate between services or between pods so if i go there to my visual studio and show you the service.yaml file so here you can see i'm creating the kubernetes service you provide the namespace and the selector whatever your whatever your application name is deployment name is so once i create once i run this deployment you will see that we have one object service which is created and that is called it or by default it creates the cluster ip so if i go there and just clear this and run this kubectl apply hyphen f service dot yaml so you will see that service created successfully and if i do get service hyphen hyphen a is just like get services from all of the namespaces so here you can see for our stuff eks sample linux you can see that this is the cluster ip that it has created so this is so this cluster ip is created by default and it is used by the Kubernetes pods to make an internal communication because this cluster IP is not going to change. So this is attached to your deployment and it is and that deployment has three replicas also. So if any other pods or any other service needs to communicate, then they will use this cluster IP. So it is used for basically inter service communication. We use the cluster IP. So with this, we solve that problem of how services can communicate to each other internally.